coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next STL 2.0 tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to uh, look into distance based collision. So I know in the last tutorial I said I was going to teach pixel based collision but I decided not to teach it because it's not widely used and it's really not the recommended thing to use because it's so it requires so much from the hardware and um, and there's other methods that are better uh, that can that are better more efficient to use than pixel collision so uh, I decided just to teach um, the distance based collision so you already know how to do it with bounding boxes and distance based collision is um, circular based collision so um, we're gonna look on how to do it so I'm pretty sure all, all, if not all most of you guys have heard about the Pythagorean theorem and the Pythagorean theorem sorry that it's really badly drawn I'm using the bamboo tablet my girlfriend got for me uh, last year for my birthday uh, but I haven't been using it for a while so it's uh, it takes some time to get used to but anyways um, so what we have here is a, a really ugly right triangle and with the right triangle if we have a the Pythagorean theorem Pythagorean theorem says okay that if we have a and B we can find C which is the hypotenuse and so um, what we want to do is find the hypotenuse to see the distance between these two circular areas and this is how we're going to do so so um, to find A as you can see it's the difference between the X coordinates of the um, of the two circles and B is the difference between the Y coordinates uh, with both uh, with both circles so we can say that a is equal to sorry normally my penmanship is really good but it's hard with this uh, so if we if our x position say this is our first circle and this is our x position this is our y position right uh, we're gonna put our a is equal to 150 minus 250 and our b will be equal to the first circle's y position, subtract the second circle's y position. So the Pythagorean theorem works like this. It says a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now if we just want to get c alone, then we have to just do on one side as so we're going to do the opposite side. So if we want to get rid of the squared symbol, then we got to square root both of them. So basically, C is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Simple al algebra and trigonometry. So, uh, now that we've got that set, so if we were to say 150 minus 250, that gives us um, negative 100. And if we say 100 minus 200, that gives us negative 100. Now you might be saying, okay, now what if this uh, circle was further on the screen for here so say it wasn't a negative number or say we flipped around these values 250 minus 150 and 200 minus 100 doesn't matter which order the values in are in and no it doesn't matter as you can see we're squaring the values which means uh, to multiply the values by itself so negative 100 times negative 100 is equal to positive 10,000 100 times 100 if we flip these around 250 minus 150 is equal to positive 100 Positive 100 times positive 100 is equal to positive 10,000 same here 100 minus 200 is equal to negative 100 and when we square it We're gonna get positive 10,000 if we were to flip them 200 minus 100 is positive 100 squared is is positive 10,000 so it doesn't matter which order you do it in if you guys were worried about that uh, but let's move over here so basically we're saying 100 squared for a squared would be 100 squared plus 100 squared sorry about that and we get the square root of that so the square root of 20,000 and that would be equal to C and I, I don't have my calculator right now but that's basically how it will work 
And so that's how we're going, that's the formula we're going to use to find the hypotenuse and find the side right here. So it's relatively easy, but what we need to do right now is that with our players right now, our, if this is our player, our X and Y are at this origin point right here. So we need to have something to store our origin point in the center. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to make, uh, Let's see. We're gonna make uh, our origin x, and we're gonna make origin y, and we're just going to. Um, if you really want to use encapsulation and do it the proper way, you'd make these private, and you would just make get methods for them, because we don't need to set them outside the class. So the proper way to do it is that way. But I kind of just want to make it pretty quick. Uh, but in the source code for this tutorial, I will do the proper way. Actually, you know what, whatever. We'll just do the proper way right now. So the proper way would be to say, okay, and get origin x. And we say and get origin y. So at the bottom, we'll just say int player should be capital. Uh, so get origin x return origin x and in player get origin y and usually I like to do them all in one line so all right so we got that done Okay, so we got that done, we got the origin x and we get the origin y. So now based on our formula, first thing we need to include the C math library. So sorry, so what we want to do is find the origin x and the origin y. So we want the origin to be in the center. So we're gonna say okay our origin x is equal to is equal to our frame width divided by 2 and our origin y is going to be equal to our frame width frame height sorry divided by 2 so that's going to give us the center of our character's image so now what we want to do is we want to get the square root of a squared plus b squared so to get our a squared it is the first player's x subtract the second play oh sorry the first player's origin x subtract the second player's origin x uh, and sorry we got to get the power of two of that right so we're going to say origin x subtract p dot get origin x and then to the power of two and we're going to say plus we're going to get the power of origin y subtract p dot get origin y and we're gonna get the power of two of that. And then we're square rooting everything. So we got our square root of everything. And then we wanna say if it's greater than or equal to, and we have to get a radius. Uh, so we're gonna have a radius. And we're gonna say int get radius. So int player get radius. And let's put this capital G. Okay, so we have a uh, get method for getting our radius. So we're gonna say radius plus p dot get radius. So we didn't actually set a radius, and we're just gonna set the radius equal to. Um, frame width divided by 2 since the frame width and frame height are the exact same so we'll say radius frame width divided by 2 so um, basically what this is saying is that okay um, the radius is the half of the the length or whatever the circle right so we're just saying how long that is so 
we're if we were to draw a circular area around our character we're going to say that we want our radius to be 16 which is equal to the width and the height of it so 16 pixels all around uh that is uh sort of the radius of the actual circle so the reason why we say um, if it's greater than radius plus p radius, then it's set to false. Otherwise, it's set to true. Is uh, simply because of this. So let's. Uh, if I draw a circle right here, and a circle right there. So, if we were to sort of draw this out, the hypotenuse. We want to find the length of the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse would be the length from this radius to this radius right here. So if it is greater than the radius, this radius of this circle is right here. So let's draw this in a different color. So radius of the circle is right here, or it's the same across all rectangles. So say this radius is 16, and this radius is 16 as well. So if the radius, if the hypotenuse is greater than or equal to, or greater than 32 or equal to 32, that means they're not overlapping. It means that the hypotenuse is too long. That means there's a gap. Now, if it's less than 32, that means we can tell that they are overlapping each other. And so um, that's how we're actually going to determine it. So let's run this program to actually see if it runs properly. And we have a problem. And our problem is is pretty. It's simple. Um, so what I did was a I, what I did was really retarded. So I said our origin and our origin y equals the frame width uh, plus frame height. But we really should be adding. Um, we really should be adding that to our current position. So we're gonna say position rect dot x plus origin x we'll say position rect dot y plus origin y so for right here we'll just say get origin x and right here we'll say get origin y so let's run this As you can see, we're, we're moving, and as soon as we hit that that radius, that whatever whatever bound we put around it, then we see a uh, collision. So, say for example, we set the radius to even a less a lesser value. So we set the radius um, instead of setting it to 16, we set it to say 5. So when we run this, as you can see they're touching now, but it's not within the radius. And once the x, uh, the other player's origin is within this radius that we've set, so it's a small little radius uh, within the middle here. Once it overlaps that, then you see a collision. So uh, that's it for this tutorial. Sorry for making it so long, but I hope you guys understood it thoroughly. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Also, don't forget to like my page on Facebook, follow on Twitter, and don't forget to sign up on my website as well. So bye for now.